Hi friends, my name is host Eric, I'm the host of Talking with Fans People, and for a change I'm actually live streaming on Talking with Fans People. Um, why? I don't know, when? Magic? I can bear dot io I dot here you are you're here you're queer you don't want any more bears <sighs> it's been an interesting couple of days here uh Hi Bacon, hi Jerry like the mouse. Hi email anthrax. I'll tell you this much. Uh there's more activity than I normally get on the archive channel. Apparently YouTube is notifying people. Here's the thing. The fact is this. I was looking at um You thought I died in the arms of my lover? Um, I, I could die in your arms tonight. Is a song. You're gonna write me off? I've been live streaming on the other channel, you know. That's part. I guess part of the reason why I said ah, I'll live stream here to announce to people. I generally don't do stuff on this channel at the moment. I'm mean, doing stuff on the archive channel. But um. I mean, what's very evident is YouTube is not recommending any of my videos. If you look at the analytics, it's clear as day. You, recommended videos used to be among my highest percentage of sources. Now it's almost all YouTube search. Um, in fact, one of my most successful videos right now is Don my Don Adams video. Because, why? Well, it gets hits for, when people search for Don Adams... It's okay. It's the TWFP Archive channel. It's, there's a link to it on the main TWFP channel. Off to the side, it's like related channels or recommended channels or, you know, featured. This one is featured channel. I put the Archive channel in there. Um, but, you know, I've been thinking a lot, and I know that I'm going to take a so I'm going to launch a, a path here shortly. It's today, tomorrow is April 1st. And um, sometime, you know, April 2nd or something maybe. Not tomorrow probably. But, oh, we're talking about secrets. Big secrets. Secret knowledge. What kind of secret knowledge that can change the war, the course of the war? I just put them all on notification and didn't notice. Hmm, don't notice, right? Yeah, a path. Uh, what's obviously lacking for me historically and even and currently as well is clarity on the FI and NI matters. Uh, FI matters are, it, you have to have some understanding of good, good clarity about some aspects of FI or else you don't know which thing you want to do more. Like, I'm glad I made that cartoon video earlier. Um, it's not currently on Snappy Tracks, but I, I I'll probably give it a trial run. It's interesting when you when I include things on Snappy Tracks and I listen to it. Uh, I can usually know, and when it naturally occurs in the mix of things whether it belongs there or not, in a way that I can't when it's not, when I'm not listening to it. Uh, the cartoon video, yeah, I'll, I'll put a, I'll put a link to it here. Um, this one is, it's the video, of, oh, there it is, archives. This one, pick a tune, and it says, a personality type test, so to speak, 
that is um, that is that is if you you say which is your favorite cartoon and then I say what type you are based on that so there's 16 classic cartoons from the time when Delilah was a kid which is when I watched a lot of cartoons probably watched as many cartoons when Delilah was a kid as I did when I was a kid um, so the cartoon one it includes in this particular video it includes 16 tunes which are number one as told by Ginger two Ben 10 three Camp Laszlo four Cat Dog five Chowder six Jimmy Neutron seven Courage the Cowardly Dog eight Dexter's Lab nine Ed, Ed and Eddie ten Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends eleven Graham Adventures of Billy and Mandy twelve Johnny Bravo 13 Phineas and Ferb, 14 Powerpuff Girls, 15 Samurai Jack, or 16 Teen Titans. Which of those 2000 years, 2000 to 2006 or 7 or so, somewhere in there, um, which of those cartoons do you like best? And then I'll tell you what type you are. So that's the cartoon video. Betty Poop. Betty Boop 1993 want to be a member? Want to be a member? Who's Betty Boop 1993? Secret Society Initiation Cartoon. Oh. Is to be in the Secret Society you have to watch Betty Boop? That seems like an unnecessary burden. Courage the Cowardly Dog always creep me out too I talk about that a lot in there that um, I, I respect it as a as art but um, I didn't like the show I never enjoyed it I always found it, it that's just creepy but like kind of depressing um, yeah well I, the, I've just chosen the cartoons from the years that I watched cartoons with my daughter Delilah so like, for example, the Powerpuff Girl movie came out when Delilah was three years old. And those are the cartoons, mostly, that we watched. Except I did include in there the Ginger cartoon. Because I was looking for a cartoon for INFP. And <laughs> Delilah and I didn't watch any cartoons that would be appropriate for INFP. Because, obviously, we're both FI polar, so. Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. That one, uh, is... Uh, uh, INTJ. Yeah. INTJ is really that one. If you pick Billy and Mandy, then you're INTJ. And if you pick the Teen Titans, you're ESTP. Yeah, of course, obviously, this is not a, this is a wholly unreliable way to type people. But it's a cool gimmick for a video. Uh, I picked Phineas and Ferb, actually, is my favorite among them. And I made that one as ENTP. Phineas and Ferb is, uh... Is entertaining. I, I always liked it. They have good songs. You know, I like... If, if you're going to entertain me with a good song, like Squirrels in My Pants featuring Candace from Phineas and Ferb, then you're, you're making some progress with me. Uh, same with There's a Platypus Controlling Me. Great, great, just brilliant. If you've not seen it, go on YouTube. Just type in There's a Platypus Controlling Me. It's really good. It's a great song. Although you probably, maybe I think for the uninitiated, start with Squirrels in My Pants. I would suggest that one is a better way to start, probably. Squirrels in my pants. No. Um, <coughs> ENTJ, we gave uh, Dexter's Lab to the 
ENTJs. Well, they're always trying to do something that they're not supposed to do, and Candace is always trying to get them in trouble. But I always, I actually found the the characters were more fleshed out in Phineas and Ferb than most car- most kids' cartoons. Like at least Candace seemed like a multi level a a character with some depth to her. Ren and Stimpy, if we had included that in in the thing then I guess it would have been like probably INTP with like Ren and Stimpy or something but I'm not sure Ren and Stimpy is well it's good that I limited it to a specific era I think yeah Texas Love is good I, um in particular Dee Dee was funny and the main Mandrake was funny Mandrake and Dee Dee were funny. I like Dexter's uh, accent. Stupid Dee Dee. Well, I don't know if you watch. You apparently haven't watched the cartoon video yet. Well, I suspect you might be on the same page as me there, Email Anthrax. Johnny Bravo is, in my opinion, substantially the worst of any of those cartoons. Yeah, I gave it to ISTJs. It's like ISTJ level any. It's really fucking weak. <coughs> and their NI is replaced by other people's N.I. that they remember. It's like horrible. Johnny Bravo is a horrible, horrible show. Samurai Jack, that one's ENFJ. It's got that you know, really great visual N.I.F.E. It's very, it very, very pops. It pops a lot. Uh, as long as you're not looking too much for language pop from it. I mean, it was very cool. So they, they got ENFJ. That's Samurai Jack. Let's see. Uh, one, uh, one that we were going to put on there that had to be bumped to make room for something else. Uh, it was Codename Kid ne- Kids Next Door. Codename Kids Next Door was a show that I remember watching quite a bit of with Delilah. She liked it. And um I thought it was okay. I thought it was pretty good, you know. It could have been worse. I, I'm I'm pretty I have I'm a pretty gentle audience for cartoons. Like I'm easily entertained, I guess you could say. It's not fair to decide. Pepe Le Pew that's a uh, way too old cartoon. We're limiting cartoons to the the heyday of the the launch, basically the launch of Cartoon Network, which was like Johnny Bravo, Dexter's Lab, all those Courage the Cowardly Dog, um, you know the ones on the list there, basically. But I included some Disney Channel and Nickelodeon ones too because. Obviously, Delilah liked shows on some shows on each of those channels, so those were the ones that mostly made the list. Uh, I liked, uh, what was it? So, like, Delilah didn't really like Jimmy Neutron. I liked Jimmy Neutron more than Delilah liked it. She, I don't know, she didn't like it. She likes the boy, but she liked other things that a boy did, him, so I don't know. I enjoyed probably, I found very comfortable watching Chowder or Foster's Home. Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Who do you think got Ed, Ed, and Eddie? Cat Dog, terrible. Cat Dog's terrible. Um, not, not as terrible as Johnny Bravo, but still terrible. Uh, Cat Dog is ESFJ. Ed, Ed, and Eddie. What do you guys think? Who do you think is, is the personality type for Ed, Ed, and Eddie?
Yeah, that was one that I would want to I'd say. Well, can we watch Jimmy Neutron instead? Of, because I'd always basically defer to her to watching cartoons. I like cartoons too, um, but sometimes I wouldn't want to watch like the more girly cartoon that she wanted to watch. I'd want to watch. Well, can we watch Jimmy Neutron instead? And she's like, I don't like Jimmy Neutron. He looks funny. I don't like him. I remember watching Codenames Kids Next Door from Sick Days growing up. I found it annoying, but if I was watching cartoons, I usually meant too... I felt too sick to change the channel. Uh, it was a little annoying. You know, it wasn't my favorite. It was. It's a little bit of a younger kids cartoon, whereas, say, uh, I guess... Like... Uh, what's it? Well, like, Samurai Jack's definitely an older kids cartoon. Curse the Cowardly Dog shouldn't be a kids cartoon at all. That thing's, it's, it's dark. Who got Teen Titans? ESTP. ENFP gets Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. And, uh, although, you know, that was definitely one of my favorites too. Uh, depending on when you ask me or my mood uh, at the moment I guess or something um, I might have said Foster's was my favorite Recess that was a little bit after Delilah was too old for that it's a little bit later than the period of time when I was watching cartoons with Delilah Ed and Eddie's ESFP ESFP's or Ed, Ed and Eddie uh Yeah, it says in the video, if you want to see the video. It's timestamp too, so you can just check to see which one is which or whatever. I pinned a comment with timestamps in it. I, the timestamps may be kind of not exactly right, because I was doing it as I was watching the premiere. The thing is... One of the topics, one of the discussions that comes through in that, I did watch DuckTales, but I didn't even think about that one. Um, we, I did watch some DuckTales, but I, not really with Delilah. I think I, I saw some DuckTales in some other context, probably at work with Special Ed. Uh, but... Yeah. Kids Next Door. Oh, I forgot about that one. What's that one? Code Name Kids Next Door. Yeah, we just talked about that one. Right. The thing is, oh, here's one that got bumped from the list that I did used to watch a lot of with Delilah. Fairly Odd Parents. Uh, it, it had to make room for something, so we had to bump it off of the list because it just wasn't appropriate for whatever type um so we replaced it with yeah Phineas and Ferb is ENTP I like I, I don't know I like Phineas and Ferb a lot it's got songs it's got funny songs in it like you know as mentioned uh squirrels in my pants and there's a platypus controlling me it's underneath the table there's a platypus controlling me <laughs> That's so funny. I like Doofenshmirtz a lot. Like, I guess... I guess there's just something quirky about that show that I like, Phineas and Ferb. Like, Doofenshmirtz... I like Doofenshmirtz's um, hot daughter. <laughs> and... I just like the show in general. I like Phineas, I like Ferb, I like Candace. I like the platypus, Perry the platypus. Um... He doesn't ever say anything, but he's always battling Doofenshmirtz. So, uh, okay. What else do I want to talk about? I have secret knowledge. Did I mention that? I have secret knowledge. Shh. What kind of secret knowledge do you have? Right? Ooh, the secretest kind. Great songs, lighthearted conflict, lots of SI callbacks. Yeah. 
Squirrels, squirrels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I get that it's not, it's not some sort of ultra genius, whatever. It's, it's for kids, but it's, it's fun. I like it. <laughs> Internet. Oh yeah, that's that's fairly odd parents, right. That's that's his excuse for everything. His parents are really like oblivious or something. Um I love superheroes too. I, I I've always liked that superhero shit, you know? I'm uh It make me it make me have an SI I'm having SI like extroversion breakdown for a moment there as I started imagining times long past when I was watching a lot more cartoons and cable in general uh, prior to starting this YouTube channel I watched a lot of TV baby Looney Tunes is a good choice for that that's true um, but I think to, as told by Ginger is a great INFP one. She's so earnest and preachy and <sighs> not that INFPs are preachy exactly, but it just makes, she just believes the, there's lots of shit in that show. Cause I, I, haven't, I haven't really watched it, but I, I watched some clips of it to see what it was like. And almost immediately they started going in on the. Yes, F-I, no F-E-E themes. All right, let me pull this bar. Do you love Eastern Europe? Mm, I don't have any feelings about Eastern Europe, really. Happy April Fool's Day. Adventure Time is too new. It, Adventure Time is 2010 or so. Delilah at that point was 13 or 14. We weren't sitting home watching cartoons anymore. I mean, I really like Bob's Burgers. Rachel introduced me to that. That's really funny. I like, um, is, is Eastern Europe a cartoon? <coughs> <coughs> it occurs to me, maybe it is, and I don't know. I don't know that. Um, so, let me take a, uh, a short break to deal with a cigarette and a little bit of Coca-Cola here as a beverage. While I'm taking this short break, I will play for you this thing. I hope you enjoy it. It's called New B Backup. Rick and Morty is, is a great cartoon. This is, that's a show I like now. Uh, but I'm the fourth season's not out on Hulu yet, so what are you gonna do? All right, I'll be right back.
back um this semester has been the year of death for me two semesters correction it's good ti there bacon <laughs> it's good ti oh secret knowledge right i forgot about that i haven't gotten around to it yet so good i'm, I'm glad you're hearing it you're here in time you didn't miss out on the secret knowledge <clears throat> it's it's a warehouse full of secret knowledge okay i'll tell you in a second but it's a secret, but it won't be for long. Once I share the secret with you, you'll know. <sighs> Believe me, you're, you're going to be like, wow, that's amazing, Eric. I'm so happy you shared this secret knowledge with me. It has to be known by one person. What makes it secret is the not telling other people. That's why I haven't said it yet. That, that's why I'm maintaining the truth of the title for some longer stretch of time. Once I tell you all, then the, the title will immediately be rendered into a lie. Where is my house? <laughs> it's in Arcadia, California. That's where my house is. Why are you streaming on TWFP? Well, in part, uh, I wanted to alert people that I don't generally live stream here anymore. The secret is not, that's not a secret, okay? That they are essential, fortunately. Um, <clears throat> even if they weren't, there are plenty of delivery services. So... Um, no, 
I guess my secret knowledge here is uh, is not is not neat to to really just, like I'm gonna try to NI it a little bit more before I lay it out there. Okay, yeah, I will. I'll come up with secondary secret knowledge. Okay, well, I've got some. I do have some basic life hacks. Okay, which is to say, these are things you should know that will make your life better if you know them that you might not know currently. Okay. First of all, you may know this if you if you've watched some of my live streams because I've talked about it before. But a peanut is. A legume, not a nut. It's like a pea. Okay. I'm concerned that you might not know that, but now if you didn't know that, you do. Okay. So that's one piece of secret knowledge, but it's not. It's not the main secret knowledge. I'll give you another piece of secret knowledge. Something I learned just the other day. Peanut, yes, a peanut is a legume, like like a pea. It's not a nut at all. Good. Thank you, horse mumbler. I greatly appreciate that. Um, I'm gonna tell you another truth then. Something really important. You might not know. There's one subject in English that uses the nominative case. Not the objective case. Do you know what it, what kind of subject uses the nominative? I mean, it's one kind of subject that uses the objective case, not the nominative case. Which kind of subject in English uses the objective case? Hmm. The clock's ticking. This is a tricky one, huh? You told someone the truth at lunch today? Uh-oh. Don't start doing that. Just don't make it a habit of that. Telling people the truth. Black beans are a legume, not a bean. You've taught me something. Are beans legumes? They might be. Um, okay, so have you have you thought about the question I asked? What is the only subject in English that uses the objective case? Nobody knows that, huh? I wonder if you could Google it. It might be such a obscure grammar question you wouldn't even be able to Google it successfully. It would have to. You'd have to dig around a bit or something. I can handle the truth. I can put handles onto the truth. I can break handles off the truth. I can handle the truth handles. And I can handle truth packed up with bananas into a box. You got real preachy. Oh, cool. Listen, bro. Listen, bro. I'm going to get real with you, all right? I'm going to lay down the real truth. You need to stop that. It's not okay. Here's a little life hack. Don't demonstrate more intelligence than is necessary. There'll be more expectations put on you. Yeah, well, I, I would replace the word intelligence with competence. So... That's true at work in general. The more competent you are, the more you're expected to do. Yeah, well, objective case pronouns, those nominative case pronouns are I, I, he, she, we, uh, I, he, she, I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they. I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they. That's the nominative case pronouns. Me, you, him, her, it, us, them. Me, you, him, her, it. No, me, you, yeah. Me, you, him, her, it, us, you, them. So, 
Those are the objective case. So we use the objective case for objects, like I kicked him. And we use the nominative case for subjects, like he kicked me. Me is no, is objective case, because it's the direct object. Um, we also use objective case pronouns for objects of the preposition. Like, this book is about him. You wouldn't say this book is about he, that's the nominative case pronoun. So, we also use objective case pronouns for every other kind of object that uses pronouns. For example, give him the ball. It's an indirect object. Him is an indirect object. It's using the objective case. You think you almost yelled? You got into it? They tried to sell you on their religious beliefs? Email anthrax? I've got a question for you. Have you heard the good news? Christ is risen. Would you like to learn more about Jesus? And how he can save you? And make you feel tender in your scrotum, tender in your scrotum again. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't ever try to sell anybody on my religious beliefs. I don't, I don't really have religious beliefs, to be honest. I have uh, religious behaviors. Uh, I, you could call things. I, I guess to the extent that something is acted upon or has notable non-conditional impacts, then it comprises sufficient sufficiently treating something as belief to call it belief? I'm not sure. Maria Sanchez has a heart inside his chest. Thump, thump, thump. His heart goes bump. His heart goes thump. His heart goes womp, 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 womp. I am beating all the time, pumping my blood around and pumping in my mind. I have a heart that's great to shine, so I got some car wax. <sighs> I am a little bit tired, but I'm also a little bit I'm gonna I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest. I'm a little bit troubled. Rachel's um having some trouble sleeping and I guess experiencing some non optimal being, I guess. Your major belief is to chase truth. I mean, here's the thing, email the anthrax. So that's a good frame. And it's a frame that's easy also to mistake as a meta frame. But I point out that it's probably worthwhile to define truth pretty carefully if, you're, if that's going to be your goal. Because non-metaphorical uses of the word truth refer to a status that gets assigned to a given statement for the purposes of some sort of communicative endeavor. Some non-optimal being. Uh, I mean, she's troubled. She's not uh, feeling, I guess, FI feelings-wise great uh it's just been the last like two days really or yesterday and today kind of uh maybe maybe a little longer than that but she's she's not um this, this, this is not a a long this is not a this is a new development put it that way Alright, so you say the truth never changes. Uh, let's set that claim aside for a second and, I'm, and ask the following question. Are you therefore defining truth as that which doesn't change? Or is that which doesn't change truth? Or is it not definitionally significant? 
Can you say a type is a higher order function made of smaller functions? Yeah, I think that's fair to say. But I think it's reductive, of course. Um, because ultimately, all, all functions and being and such, <coughs> an entity is an, is a, an example of a species of of metaphysics like we, we know that there are physical species there are different kinds of animals cats do cat stuff and have cats as children and people do people stuff and have people as children uh, and so we, we understand intuitively because it's so physical and concrete the speciation of living things in the world that there are different kinds of life and there are multiple examples of a given kind of it we don't typically think you know there's a lot more controversy anyway about the issue of personality well is that true of personalities as well are there species of personality and if so why why would there be species we can guess that they're species physically because that they have distinct genomes i hope so she's inside we took a couple extra measures tonight to help her to extra sleep. Um, you know, she's been taking her pills. They're, they're, they haven't been working. No, she's taking them. She is. Now, it's like, the nice thing is, uh, I'm not, it doesn't really bother or worry me a great deal because uh, I feel secure in the relationship, so I don't worry about the little ups and downs. But like, okay, here's an example of how I know Rachel's functioning non-optimally. She, tonight, was getting upset at me, sort of, at me, not really, not exactly at me, but sort of at me, because um, someday, when I'm out in the world giving a lot of public speeches, there are going to be girls who try to hit on me and that I might be oblivious to what's going on. And when I try to point out that it doesn't matter if I'm oblivious to what's going on because it doesn't matter what the other party d does, it's not going to change my risk factor at all. I'm not subject to those kind of temptations and I'm not subject to... I, mean, I just basically said, well, okay, that might happen, but it, you shouldn't worry about it because it's not... There's not going to be any harms from it. No, because... Because there are object fields and vectors, and some kind of objects are kinds of objects that can initiate vectors. Such objects are agents. Or subjects. They're subjects. And then, if you are the subject in question, you're an agent in that capacity. It, it, the reason I'm distinguishing... The, that is because it's it's necessary to distinguish not just between subjects and objects, which are implicit in, in the grammar we use. Uh, all language is fundamentally subject, verb, predicate usually, but if not, then just subject, verb. But uh, all, ex all communicative expressions exist either to establish the identity of something or to explain how agents act upon things so uh, so this is an interesting point here and I want to talk uh, about, about some of these things these are interesting questions so anyway, the taxonomy is as it ought to be, Bacon, because agent's a subs agent is a kind of object. An agent is always an object on the field. The thing that makes it an agent, a distinct kind of object, is how it has the ability to behave differently than other kinds of objects. Uh, and there, that's behavior specifically uh, sort of represented, measured, indicated under the, the category vectors. So... Um, I'm disregarding time as a legitimate dimension. Who, me? 
All right, now, no, 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 no. I have been bird watching. You got it completely wrong. First of all, there are two kinds of time flows that we have to account for. The first time flow is a real time flow, and the second is a turn based. Language and symbolic reasoning of all sorts is turn based time flow. Okay, so um, the TI logic is universalist, which means in our, now note truth isn't universal, but validity is. That's how we know TI is universal and not subjective, and TE is is objective but non-universal, okay, is the best way to put it. Neither, TE is really neither objective nor subjective. The only functions that are objective or subjective really are TI and FI. TI is objective, it's a disinterested calculus. FI is, is subjective, it's an interested calculus. I'm not making normative claims here. This is the thing. People misuse the words objective and subjective all the time. There's no meaningful understanding of the word objective. Uh, I'm sorry, there's no meaningful word. There's no meaningful understanding of the word subjective that indicates we ought to apply it to TI. Um, to the extent that you want to claim, well, it's an introverted function, therefore it's subjective. Well, all functions are occurring inside the agent whose being is manifest via those functions. There are no functions outside of a human mind, you know, or a mind, right? It doesn't mean impacts aren't realized outside of that person, but it does mean that functions never are. So that's not a meaningful way to distinguish between subjective and objective. Now, if you want to talk about the quality of the data being accessed, well, TE uses objective data to make subjective determinations. In other words, you can't use extroverted logic without knowing what you want to accomplish. Whereas you don't need to know anything about what you want to accomplish to use introverted logic. Um, introverted logic is obviously objective because like I said, validity is universal. All dogs are gray. This thing is gray, therefore it's a dog. It's invalid universally. We can replace the terms with symbols and it's still invalid. It doesn't even have to mean anything. So absolutely, TI is the universalist and objective logic and TE is the particularist logic. The fact that it uses objective data, in other words, if I know I want to climb up the mountain, I will use the objective data of what the mountain reveals to me about the easiest way to get up there. And I'm not gonna use subjective data, like um, I'm not gonna use, uh, well, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, know, I know what kind of ice cream I like best. I'm going to pick the direction according to the ice cream flavor or something. Something random like that and arbitrary and subjective. Uh, you're right, TE doesn't do that. TE accesses objective data, which is why anybody who's talking about the objectivity of and subjectivity of TI and TE, if they want to talk about it meaningfully, they must talk about the word objective and subjective first because they are used in several ways, but not infinite ways. So objective can refer to the data itself, which is to say an objective data is data that can be accessed by all parties equally and verified independently without having to whatever. Whereas subjective data is data that only I can access. I feel sad right now is a subjective, is a claim that only can be verified by one person, the person who's feeling it. So, um, well, yeah, a function is a process that requires a, a processor to perform it. Um, and entities are the emergent, the emergent reality of, of a, a co very complex system of, of attentional and instinctual and a lot of shit, right? But um, whether whether we can establish it or not, uh, there's a there's a presumption of identity permanence that goes along with being human, and that and that identity permanence gets the sort of uh, the honorary honorary captain's hat, but it to the extent to which they're actually captaining the ship is another matter, right? 
So, um, so anyway, objective data and subjective data is pretty easy to define and we can all agree on that. Objective data is that which everybody can access independently. Subjective data is that which only I can access. Uh, now, as far as calculi, we should be all able to agree on this as well. An objective calculus is a disinterested calculus, whereas in a, a, a subjective calculus is an interested calculus. What that means, if you're on a jury, you get a jury of your peers, but if they have a personal interest in the matter, they will be excused from the jury because, oh, you know this guy? Oh, you can't be on the jury then because they're an interested party at that point. This is what I mean by interested and disinterested calculus. So FI is, in fact, the cognitive function of interested calculation. What you want, what's in your, what you desire, what valuable to you, etc. That is what FI deliberately calculates. Now, FI, unlike TI, also experiences the, the, uh, experiences negative calculations. So, um, you know, TI might say this is valid or this is invalid. Valid is sort of normatively positive, invalid, normatively negative. Same, same, same thing with FI, you might say, well, this is positive, this is negative. But with TI, it doesn't really hurt unless you're attached to it, which is FI. Now, if you are attached to it and you're, um, you're married to your ID, your advocacy, then it can hurt a lot when people prove you wrong. And especially if you're an FI user and you're a strong advocate for some sort of politics or something, you probably will talk to me once, twice, and then never be willing to talk to me again because I will prove you wrong and make you feel bad. Feelings aren't something to be solved. Uh, but in this case, <laughs> um, well, okay, look, it's, it's, it's like this. Rachel has expressed that she's got some sort of, she has, as everybody does periodically, some negative thoughts about the world. Like, you know, I'll, I'll wake up some days angry at the cops or some, you know, something in the world, something that happened to me before or a long time ago or whatever, or something that happened to somebody I know. So... You know, I get that everybody has those moments of feeling mad and like, you know, fuck you to the world a little bit. Uh, the thing about it is, it's like, Rachel, when, when she's not really functioning optimally, even though I'm a really good listener and I give very neutral responses in general, I'm not, I'm not arguing with her. I'm, I'm not. I'm careful with my FE with Rachel. And, uh, well, I mean, then they shouldn't be making public advocacy for public policy. Because, look, that's the thing, email anthrax. Feeling, I, I do believe in pr protecting, respecting, etc., um, people's feelings. But when they're advocating for public policy and they're making bad advocacies, they're saying, I want to use this citizen democracy to hurt everybody and I won't even justify why. I refuse to justify why. I just, I'll just say, well, because we have to do something, I refuse to be reasonable. I refuse to acknowledge that, uh, that we have to be, we have to be disinterested in our calculations and not moved too much by what we think is the urgency of a problem to take action that won't solve it or that will make it worse. We have to understand how we're acting in some ways, in some some kinds of of group action are are landing in a in a, in a multivariable chaotic system that we that resist predictions. And yet we're basing the action on the fact that we predict it's gonna have these good outcomes and the unintended consequences vastly outnumber the intended ones and we're not really even well equipped to measure those unintended consequences. So, um, you know, FI, FITE users who forsake the universal legitimacy while advocating the, the universal power be used and enforced universally, even though it's illegitimate, that's a problem. That kind of thing causes real damage to people. That's why we have this COVID shit. 
Who's responsible for the um, for the coming depression, global depression, the coming dramatic drop in quality of life? Who's responsible for it? FI users. They're responsible for it because they don't care. They because they care so much they don't care. You know, it's like FI users don't get it. I'm not mad at you because you're not agreeing with me or you won't let me win or something. I'm mad at you because you're, you've successfully won the argument and forced onto everybody um, a horribly bad idea, a horribly bad decision, a horribly bad approach to this whole thing. And, and then when it's all said and done, you know, I know how it's going to play out in terms of the narratives when, in fact, people go, why are we all doing this here? Nobody's, I don't know anybody who's got this thing. I don't know anybody who's sick. I don't know anybody who's in the hospital. My doctor's office, when I call it, says 80% of the people who get it have very mild or no symptoms. And, um, you know, at a certain point, people are going to go, this is insane. It makes no sense. This can't be real even. Um, they cared about the wrong thing. But the, the reason they cared about the wrong thing is because they made their decision based on caring rather than not caring. That's the difference between a interested and a disinterested calculus. I was not interested in having a certain position be correct. I was interested in being actually correct. That's my feelings. That's my, where my feelings come in. My feelings are best satisfied when I know that I've not allowed my feelings to ever influence my objective calculation about what the best course of action is, given the information at hand, and so forth. If we're talking about policy questions, it's my duty as a citizen and a thinker and a human being to not allow my own shortcomings, which are plenty, to harm other people directly. So, for example, I can't predict if bombing those uh, militants is going to increase the amount of blowback and recruit more militants or if it's going to shut down the militancy. So unless there's some urgent need to bomb that particular group of militants because they're right about to blow us up or something, then it would be foolhardy of me to take that action knowing that the unintended consequences could be worse than the positive uh, could be far worse than the the uh, measurable positive impacts could ever amount to. Uh, that's basic human responsibility to say, I'm not going to be so stupid and arrogant as to assume I can guess what's going to happen all the time and that my actions will have the outcomes I predict. I have to be measured in my calculations. Just because it's my idea doesn't mean it's going to work. Doesn't mean it's a good idea. I have to, for all of my ideas and everybody else's ideas, I have to approach them honestly, with pure and deep intellectual honesty, which says, I will give your idea, a, if, if you're right, and you make the right argument, you win, the, you win the argument, you will be, I will afford you all the according legitimacy. Now, look, ideologies are fundamentally an FI phenomenon. Now, ideologies is are, are very common because people get very attached to things. Especially with certain cognitive functions, texts, they're very prone to attachment. Uh, now, SI is anti-ideology. So, FINI is where you're looking at the most ideological. Uh, your NTJs and your um, SFPs. They're most likely to buy into an ideology and commit their life to it and so forth because they're not SI, which SI is very particularist. My dad's not, my dad's an atheist and he's, you know, he's, he doesn't, he doesn't have ideologies. He's got, 
arguments, sort of, that are usually TE based. Um, Kimberly, SI Dome, she didn't, she didn't have any ideological bent to her at all. My friend Dave Porter, SI Dome, no ideological bent to him. Um, it's pretty clear to me that ideology links to two things. It links to FI and NI. Uh, because the ideological quality is mitigated in INFJs compared to INTJs. INFJs are much less ideological than INTJs, or at least much less evidently so. And um, that's because FE recognizes ideology, ideologies as divisive. The um, so that's why it's maximally realized in NIFI, which is why, of course, I'm very, I've managed to become very non-ideological. I wasn't always. I, I, I mean, I was always not ideological, but I used to be a groupist of, in, in my own way. I would be like those goddamn Republicans, or usually it was the Republicans I was mad at. Back in the, back in the day when I was a groupist, I I hated the Republicans. Um, now I, I I I can say it's you know I'm an equal opportunity disdain disdain thrower. I have equal disdain for Republicans and Democrats alike. Well, see, that's the other thing. Um, Hambo, I don't know if you're Hambo's still here, who I was talking to about Rachel. Um, you know, there's there is a certain psychic psychic uh, burden that you carry in this whole in, in this whole virus shit, knowing that everyone is kind of locked down and there's no good reason for it, and it's gonna do a bunch of harm, and we're we're like. We're, we're basically having right now this this crazily ill-advised spring break where we're blowing our life savings on getting drunk and, and woohooing and stuff and um, and it's hard for for me to to uh, make the leap forget about the larger realities and enjoy myself but it's not but the thing is, it's actually not hard for me to do that anymore. It was at first for a few days. But I think it is hard for Rachel. I think it's hard for, harder for her to ignore that larger reality, the larger reality of things, um, than it is for me to ignore. So, I think that's one of the things that's sort of bringing her down a little bit. But the point is, what it looks like when when Rachel's, you know, getting a little non-optimal, is <coughs> is what I was talking about before. I'm not sure if I finished explaining it exactly, but the they were. It's like she's upset because of stuff that hasn't happened yet. And that, and then she starts saying things like, you know, well, I'm not sure how we're going to handle this. You know, like maybe, maybe the implication, the underlying subtext is maybe I'm not a good partner for you, Eric. I want to make sure I'm a good partner for you. It's never, she's not ever said anything along the lines of, she's not sure I'm a good partner for her. Um... <clears throat> But she, she, she can be, you know, she has fears, insecurities, jealousy and stuff. The thing is, when it's causing a conflict and it not happened, then, and it's just, she's knowing the NI truth of the thing. And she's just completely throwing SI out the window. Like all of our SI experiences are very positive, and, or most of them. And 
we're obviously in a very loving relationship. We love each other and treat each other well and are kind and reasonable and fair and all that shit, right? Uh... So I don't like libertarians either, Nicholas Watson. Now, I know you didn't ask me, but I don't like libertarians either. Our libertarians are a problem too. The reason they're a problem is because... Talk about... I mean, they're, they're the most ideological of the, of the political parties. And... It comes with the normal problems that it always comes with. It's placing uh, placing the map above the territory. That's what libertarians do. They place them up, the map above the territory. Democrats also place the map above the territory. And Republicans tend to place the territory above the map. None of those are okay. We need to not prioritize either the map or the territory... We need to have them align as perfectly as possible. You got to watch your ENFJ dad demonstrate the value matrix compared to INFJ? Really? Can you explain a little further? I'm interested in hearing this. But, you know, the thing is, people have this prime directive driving them to have expectations and realities met. Meet and one of the areas where they meet least is <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> um, so, uh, I forgot what I was saying before that. I, I'm very tired myself. But the thing is, that's in I run amok, right? It's like, Rachel and I have all these experiences, and what she's upset about is something that she knows universally is true because of who I am, that is to say, I'm sort of a public figure, and how people, other people are shitty or whatever. So, that's like, in that case, you know, an INFJ that's functioning well incorporates um, SI to serve their NI. And one of the things that means, ideally, is they go, okay, well, here's an NI truth, but I'm going to access the SI to fuel it. And that what that means is if there is no SI to fuel it, then you're not probably gonna be you're you're not you're gonna sort of like set the NI truth aside. Because um you know, it's like, well that may be generally true, but it's not true in this instance based on my particular experience. Yeah, I know. People ex- Here's, people expect to get jobs after getting their worthless degree. That's a punch to their prime director. It is. Uh, and, and the thing is, INFJs, I, I'm sure she will. I know she will. You know, that's right. This, this is the thing, though. It's like, I agree with all that stuff. I think, yeah, okay, well, that probably will happen. Uh, and it is possible that I'll be oblivious to it. But the point I'm making, Rachel, is that if you tell me about it, I'll... I was, I, as usual, I would defer to your uh, superior FE instincts over mine. And um, number two, it doesn't matter because it, no matter how much people do that or how many people do that or how they go about doing that, the amount of risk of me changing my behavior one way or the other in any fashion really is zero. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't impact risks at all. 
but and also I make clear but listen hey I totally defer to your authority over that sort of thing if you say hey I don't feel feel comfortable with you spending time with this woman Eric I just wouldn't and in fact when there was that other chick who was from London who was coming out to LA and wanted to hang out uh, I before she even got here made a big sort of like made it made it publicly known that I wasn't going to bring her that we weren't going to hang out in private in any rooms even if, since Rachel was long distance at that point um, we'd go to Starbucks or something uh, they don't even have a fake goal So the thing is, why am I in trouble? She can be jealous if she wants. The thing is, what we what we got into, the the gist of the argument, which is, which is why it's I don't I'm not even really bothered particularly by it because it doesn't make any sense. Um. Yeah, I I look. First of all, I don't have extra attention to give to some bullshit I I'm busy I'm either busy doing shit like this making stuff making videos uploading stuff rearranging this room like oh, I've been very busy the last few days making music or whatever or I'm busy not doing everything she can question everything she can question all she wants she has access to all of my shit she gets my email on her phone she is welcome to go into Facebook I tell her all the time I don't hide anything Go ahead, search for all, do whatever you want. Question me about anything. I'll answer any question. I don't care. So, so what? I like I like answering questions that I didn't say it was BS. I'm saying I have no problem answering questions about anything related to that or providing any sort of access to anything because I have nothing to hide. I'm not doing anything wrong. And at the end of the day, that's the determinant point. Not only am I I have nothing to hide and I'm not doing anything wrong, but I am actively, proactively, and repeatedly saying this is this won't ever happen. This sort of thing doesn't happen with me. It hasn't happened in in since I was 18 years old, and uh, you know I did cheat once when I was 18. Never have since, and that's been through through two terrible marriages. So I would. It's like I've got so many so many. There's no good intuition that suggests that there's any need to be concerned about me. I would I would always proactively tell Rachel anything that seemed to me um, remotely relevant in that area, and I always have. And what so what she says is, well, I'm worried that you're not going to notice it. Well, if I don't notice it, then what's the fucking harm? You know. I mean, I've, I've conveyed all this stuff. The point is, if you're having a conflict because of a intuited point of conflict that doesn't exist yet, um, that doesn't actually put the couple or either party at any risk, and that runs afoul of a lot of other sort of basic SI realities, then that's in line running them up. Because NIFI or anything like Because you can't, I mean, if you just think about it, it just doesn't make any sense at all to be upset about jealousy matters regarding a hypothetical scenario that has never happened yet and I don't think it's ever going to happen, but could. Uh, Well, I mean, look, MT, the thing is, no, it's, look, it's not, this is the point I'm trying to make, is this is not rational functioning, exactly. Um, it's not, it's, 
I still I have for Rachel and the things she says just as much legitimacy as I always do. But I would also say that if you're looking to explain this, well, this is the the medical consideration that flares up periodically with her. It's minor at the moment. I'm not seeing any... Uh, I don't think we're very close to acting out in some fashion. But uh, hopefully she's sleeping right now. She just hasn't been sleeping. Part of this seems to me is she and I are really just connected. And uh, when I'm on Adderall... Um, I'm not sleeping. She's not sleeping very well either. She probably has some sort of like FOMO or something. I don't know. Possibly. But the FE is it's it's weird. FE and intuition keep you awake. Well, look, avid bird watcher and hambone. I'm going to take exception with both of you guys a little bit, uh, and also side with both of you a little bit, I guess. Uh, the point is on the told what to do. If you need to be told what to do, I don't think anybody's saying I need to be told what to do. Although there may be some, but I think people are saying especially young people coming out of college. I I want to attain the sort of general independence values that have been instilled in me by the culture. But society, at least at initial glance, doesn't seem to afford very many clear and obvious paths for me that are meaningful to me. So, in the West, we have a, we've created a bit of a conundrum in people as we've gotten more civilized, which is to say, the more civilized a population becomes, the more they're going to be sharing messages of empowerment to their children, telling them things like, you know, I want you to be happy, I want you to, uh, follow your dreams and do what you want to do and you're special and all this other sort of stuff that people tell their kids when they're good parents. Um, of course, in contrast to that, they're also saying, or not in contrast to it, but in, in coordination with it, they're saying, you also need to, to, to both, you need to live up to that potential or that identity that I'm conferring on you of being important or significant or special or beautiful or whatever. Any of those wonderful adjectives we call our children. Um, it, and it's not just the parents who are telling their kids what they need to do to be okay in society. Uh, lots of media is giving us lots of different messages about that sort of thing. Uh, even, and the thing to note, of course, is even the slackers in the media uh, that we see that aren't that aren't high achievers, um, for the sake of convenience in the storytelling, they often have a lot of of like you know, a, a place to stay. You know, they got like a house and they got a car and they got a man. They're sure there's they're, we see that they're poor because they're scraping for pizza at the end of the month or something. You know, it's like. This we've been trained to think that a fairly high standard of living is sort of a birthright and that it's easy to attain and reality is it's, it may be sort of easy to attain but it's not both easy to attain and concurrently easy to live your life doing something other than just being an achiever. I 
I mean, we need to scrap college entirely. The thing is, the system that we currently have is has rendered education uh, instrumental, and that's the problem. For most most education that's worth learning, most most education that's worth being educated at is it 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 should be only instrumental on the particularist level. So. Well, it's instrumental to me because I want to learn logic and I don't want to learn Spanish. Uh, Spanish would be instrumental to me if I want to learn Spanish, but it's not because I don't feel like it. I'm going to Mexico next month, but I don't care because I don't want to learn Spanish. I am interested in logic, so I'm going to go seek out that information. There's a gap in my in my understanding, so I want to go learn this. That would be a good reason to learn something. Or, um, well, I've been coding this this computer thing. But I've run into a brick wall here. I can't, I can't figure out how to do this part. I need to learn how to do this because otherwise I'm stuck where I am. That's a good reason to learn something. Oh yeah, I know. I'm sure they will. Um, I, like I said, baby, I, I, I know you don't like being jealous, and. I, my hope is to reassure you that um, jealous or not, whether you're jealous or not, or whether the other per whatever the other person does or doesn't do, all of those factors combined have zero impact on my risk factors. So, I mean, I I was jealous. I was very jealous in my relationship with Kimberly for the first stretch of it. Uh, I've been jealous in the relationships before. Very jealous with, with Cooter. I trust you, so I'm not jealous. I don't know. You're. I trust you because I understand the the consequences. Um. That you just. You, it's like be, you you never win anything by doing something like that. You, you only lose. So it, it's, it's just, I can't even conceive of it happening. Nothing can do about it now. Yeah, I mean that's the thing is Well, I mean, I, I think it's generally ill-advised to go to college if you're paying for it yourself. I mean, say if you're getting a loan or you're, I mean, basically, if you're, if you're doing anything other than getting, like, some sort of grant to go to college or something, it's not, it's not a good deal economically. And, and the thing is, there are some fields of studies that are exceptions to this. Obviously, if you want to be a doctor, you're going to have to go through a rigorous set of, um, of education, you know, a rigorous program of education because there's a lot of actually very concrete information to learn. It's not an ideational field, you know. Okay. Here's the thing, Rachel. I, I believe that at some point, from now to the end of our lives, somebody will approach me in some inappropriate fashion and you'll be like, hey, what the fuck to whoever is doing that or I will or something or something and that you might feel jealous. But I guess my, my point would be, I don't think you're feeling very good right now and about things or about, about that let's say, you know, but the reason you're not feeling good about it is not jealousy, it's something else, because that's not happened, you're not jealous right now, because nothing to be jealous of, so you're feeling bad though right now anyway, so jealousy is not the only feeling that's not good, and I, I would suggest maybe 
say or ask yourself, well, what is this feeling I'm having right now about this hypothetical and and is it better than jealousy? Or is it preventing jealousy? Or I'm not sure. Well, jealousy is a very bad feeling if it's if you have cause for sure. Jealousy with cause is horrible. Um, jealousy with a partner who's not doing an adequate job of reassuring you or giving you adequate um, tools to be to reassure yourself. Um, then that's horrible, I agree. But, um, in, in a relationship where your partner is, is responding properly to fear, jealousy is just fear. All I can do when I'm, when Rachel gives me fear is reassure her and try to soothe that fear as best I can. I, I mean, I believe it does, Rachel, but remember, it hasn't happened. So, what are we upset about? You're talking about something that you anticipate will happen at some point. That at some point, even though I won't do anything wrong, even though I will certainly rebuff any advances, that somebody will will be presumptuous in that fashion and that you'll feel a flaring up of jealousy before uh, the satisfaction of realizing that they got nowhere with me. So, okay, let's say that does happen. Why is that so terrible? Okay, well, I mean, the point is, Rachel, you're upset right now, and it would seem as though you're upset about, about, like, we don't really have anything to actually be upset about, you see what I'm saying? So, you're, it feels like you're creating something to be upset about. Um, then you're probably not well at that moment, I guess. Because it's not anything. It doesn't. Ha it hasn't happened. I. I mean. I can't. I can't. Provide for you answers about. Well. What do we do if? Some third party out of your control, Eric, does things on their own accord that are presumptuous and inappropriate, but that produce no actual harm, and that afford you the opportunity to once again demonstrate that you don't, you don't play with that shit at all. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I'm just trying to say that, like, well, um, if you become a big public figure, like, I get, like, jealous now. Like, um, I don't like any of your exes, and I don't like people who, like, approach you. Who I don't like your out. exes either. So, um, if you're a public fi like, figure, I'm not sure, not like, sure. how much I can handle that. Because okay, it's going to be happen often, no? Okay, but... No. Gonna be uh, but what's going to happen often? So what, what Interaction with people. So, so you come become president. Okay, so listen. Many, many people... I don't trust Rachel, let public me figures. Let me ask you a question, please. So... What is your hope for the outcome of telling me this stuff. Like, what do you hope? That you know it's going to be pretty difficult. 
What is? Well, it's going to be difficult for me that I'll see people and it'll be no big deal to you, right? It's going to be no big deal to you. But to me, I have to watch it. Like, it's not going to be fun. I mean, it probably will be fun if they do cross any line. First of all, you, sh you should know by now that when people fuck up, they hear about it. I don't so, know what you're talking about. I mean, anybody from me. Yeah, so if, you won't know. Like, okay, so, pretty but, okay, oblivious. So, okay, fine. Hold on, hold on. So what I'm saying is, if they cross any obvious lines, then they will get, then you will get to see justice. Yeah. And if, they, if they're very subtle <laughs> in it, then you might, you, you will, what you'll get to witness is, is the fact that I'm so not subject to that stuff. Oh, I hope so. Wait, wait, wait uh, you, you know so because you just said I'd be oblivious. Yeah. Because I'm, no, I'm so not subject yeah. to that stuff, that I'm not even oh, aware it's happening. I'm just saying, I don't like the feeling, and it'll be nothing to you. I'll be upset, but it'll be nothing Rachel, to you, and that sucks. Rachel, that means you are angry about something that hasn't happened. What? So what do you want me to do with this information? You want me to? I don't know. I'm. I guess I'm thinking about it. I guess I'm thinking about it. So, you don't have to. Okay. Well, what would you like to do with the information, or, or what do you think it means? It means that I'm not totally comfortable with the fact that you'll probably be president and have a lot of women throw themselves at you, okay, so, and I'll have to watch. So you're un, you you will be uncomfortable when I'm president mm -hmm. because women will throw themselves. Yeah. At I mean, I'm I'm that na I'm that way now too. Okay. But so that's. What's the takeaway from it? What I take away from this? That I'm probably, I don't, I can't guarantee that I'm going to be, like, because I don't want to be unhealthy. I don't want to be so jealous that it makes me unhealthy, and I have a feeling it will. That's so, it. So, so, would you, what are you, what are you saying then? So, I'm not, what I'm saying is I'm not really fully prepared if that's going to happen. You're not prepared for what? The consequences of... Your public image. You mean the hypothetical consequences of my hypothetical public image that you it hasn't been manifest yet, and that you don't know how it will manifest, or because you're not talking about anything real. You're not talking about anything that's happened. All right, fine. I'm just. Uh, saying. I'm, just I'm, I'm saying you're not talking about anything that's happened, right? That's the problem. She's not sleeping, obviously.
<sighs> Simultaneous FE and FI fail? You gotta be kidding me. I'm a fucking saint. I'm dealing with things perfectly. I have neither FI nor FE failure. I'm totally calm. And I, I recognize it for what it is, which is... She's not herself right now, exactly. And... You know, when she's not herself... She... She places a lot of importance on problems that don't exist. You know, she was trying to tell me inside right now that one of the big problems is she doesn't know enough for sure about what problems there might be that she doesn't know about yet. So, you know, when when the challenge for me here is problems that she doesn't know exist and problems that she knows haven't happened then what the hell am I supposed to do with it you know nothing I can do about that I don't know what to say about that um I mean, I, I, that's why I see the thing is Jake Hurwitz. No, do you see what I was doing there? I was asking her to tell me what she meant by that. I could draw that conclusion. I obviously was aware that she's indicating that that's an area in which she feels, uh, worry and stuff. But the, the point is, in general in life, this is true for everybody, even loved ones and everything. You know, do people the favor of giving them space to mean what they say when you can. So, I say what they mean, I guess I should say. It's like, if, if that's what she means, then she needs to say that. And she doesn't want me to run for them. They may have to talk, well, I'm, you know, I'm not willing to, that's not something I'm willing to make any promises about. And, uh, and, but see, this is why I know, it's like, I don't even want to go down this line of talk, because this is a, I don't want to make the mistake of treating, of treating nothing as though it were a real problem and thereby making what was nothing into an actual real problem. So it's like does is Rachel somewhat worried about are these things that Rachel worries about? Sure. Everybody worries a little bit about possible futures. But if if you are, if your approach towards the matter is serving your interests at all, or serving your well-being, or the well-being of others at all, even, then it uh, it recognizes the fact that um, if I know I'm, I've got, I'm gonna get grilled by uh, this tax auditor. A year and a half from now that doesn't mean I can't I need to be fixated on that or something first of all who knows what's gonna happen in a year and a half right or let's say I know that I'm gonna be I'm I have to go with my family on a trip to um, Guatemala June 2021. I don't really want to go. Well, so... So should I be ruining all the time between now and June 2021 because I know something bad is going to happen in June 2021? I don't think so. Uh, of course... See, I guess the... The underlying subtext of what she was saying there is 
what she what she tends to say when um when she's you know experiencing some darkness or whatever which is that she doesn't think she's the right partner for me she usually says because basically someone else would be better for me tonight she said well because being your partner is going to make me feel very bad and the reason is because someone's going to hit on you someday so yeah, what am I supposed to do with that? I don't know. I just take I just don't take it seriously, frankly. Because I I know how most of the time she is, and then I've come to recognize when shit's not not working as far as her, her medicine and shit. Work not working properly or something. Um It's different. It's like What's important is what's what's the the norm and the constant between us. Um, I ha I can I can and want to and Rachel deserves for me to be uh, very understanding about her words. So I I generally. Try not to focus too much on what's inferred by what she's saying when she's in this place because uh, it would suggest she doesn't value me or the relationship very much. I, I know that's not the case, and so I just chalk it up to well, let's see, you know, it's her form of, of breaking out in pimples periodically. Everybody has some form of that. Well, her future's not uh, in question, and that's not that's not true. You're wrong about that, you know. That's right. To the extent that she's unsure about her future with me, it's um, it's it's an example of dysfunction whereas she you know she normally not expresses no uncertainty at all that you know, mostly what I hear a, a thousand times for every every negative I hear how how shockingly much she loves me and how how incredibly happy she, she is to be with me and stuff so that's why I hear that a thousand times for every time I hear uh, stuff that would imply the contrary and so when I do hear that I try to afford her the the slack she deserves in that area because of the infrequency and the mitigating considerations regarding the cause uh, you know right because she values me highly that's fine that's totally fine that's to be expected of course I want her to value me a lot Um, you see, the thing is, what you said is she, you're kind of trying to play both sides of the, the thing here. You're saying she's unsure about the future with me, and then you're saying she fears for her future with me because she values me so much. So what we have to do if we want to be more, like, do more work communicatively here is say, all right, well, is she unsure about me? And me being an adequate partner for her? Is she unsure about herself being an adequate partner for me? Is she unsure about our fundamental, fundamentally working as a uh, partnership, as a pair? Um, and and what things are she, is she certain about? Because she always knows her future. Is that other thing that's being said there, you know? Ask her what? I mean, what question do you think I should ask her? 
I'd be happy to. Okay, no problem asking or whatever. The thing is, that's another another indication that we're I'm looking at dysfunction here and not um, and not and not a symptom of an actual problem. Because those are two choices basically. Okay, so what question would I ask though? I would say, are you sure of your future with me from which of the several perspectives I presented? Look, I'm just, I'm just uh, trying to make use of email anthrax suggestion that I ask her, but I'm trying to figure out what he's saying I should ask her. Now she's fully figured out her feelings. Um, I believe so. I, I mean, I think she is worried because they're so strong and she's so convinced of them. And so that makes her try to generate areas where there's less certainty so that she can, I guess, protect herself from... Look, she's, she's an NI dom. She knows I'm not going to do anything. So she's found something that's NI true that she can, like, fixate on and ignores the fact that um, it's really only hurtful if your partner flirts back. If somebody tries to flirt with Rachel and she's just obviously so so linked to me that she doesn't even give the person the time of day hardly, it's not going to hurt my feelings. I think, yeah, that's right, of course. Of course you're going to hit on Rachel because she's hot and she's cool and she's not going to, and, and, you know, go for it because she is going to be, you're the one who's going to be feeling negatively in the exchange, not Rachel or me. Same with any chick who picks up on me. They're the one who's going to feel negatively about the whole thing. They're the one who's going to get nowhere and if they cross lines that are inappropriate, they're going to get my foot up their ass. So that's why Rachel says, well, but you won't be oblivious to it. You won't notice it. Because that's the only thing that her NI, she does value NI. She's not being dishonest with herself. She's found, though, the NI, the, the teeny sliver of NI that is somehow dooms everything, even though it's also a sliver, of course, that I can do absolutely nothing about. Uh, yeah, sort of. I mean, look, this is a lot better this time because I'm, I'm, I'm on top of it way sooner. We're we're both talking about it. Uh, you know, the thing is, yeah, these these are some correlates that suggest to me there's dysfunction here rather than simply um, a rather than a actual problem that needs to be addressed. The or even or even afforded this uh, ton of legitimacy, really, because not not saying that it's just I mean you just look at it objectively, right? You just look at it objectively because because here's the thing, I know it, I can tell there's dysfunction going on when I can't communicate with Rachel. In other words, when my when my words, no matter how my words are very calm and very loving and careful. Because I love her a lot, you know? And when I can't get her to make any progress, when she's working against me, then I know we're seeing dysfunction rather than um, than an actual problem. Okay, Bacon. Does it make sense to be upset about it even though it hasn't happened?
She's not upset about me flirting with somebody. That would be perfectly reasonable. But we both know, she both knows, that I would never flirt with somebody in that fashion. And so she's not even upset about me hypothetically flirting with somebody in the future because we both know that's not my style. I'm not going to do that shit. So in theory, I guess you'd say, well, maybe she's upset about... Um, about about something that she knows is going to happen in the future, for sure, that somebody will come up and flirt with me. Okay, but even if she, even if her NI is that good and she knows it's going to happen for sure, she can't know how I'm going to react to it. And so the thing she's mad about, apparently, is that it's going to happen, and some of the time I will, it'll be done so subtly that I won't notice it. And that's what she's mad about, is that sometime in the future, somebody will successfully flirt with me subtly enough that I don't notice it, and then she'll feel jealous. That's just, it's like, that is not a problem we currently have, for sure. Um, it's... Whether or not it's actually a big problem or not remains to be seen. Whether it actually happens a lot. Uh, she she does see people like do say for things to me in the live chat and stuff. But she and everybody else is well perfectly well aware that my attention is entirely on her in terms of woman, you know. I'm not interested and would never participate in anything like that, you know? Right. Um. Well, I, I don't think she's trying to justify any claim. She she's not trying to say I want you. This is this is the problem with the conversation as well. There's obviously nothing I can do about these hypothetically hurtful occasions when my obliviousness to subtle flirting allows it to be witnessed by her unchecked by me. It's a very precise hypothetical. Um, she trusts me. But her, I mean, this is the thing. She's not made bad arguments here. She's not made the arguments that can easily be disputed. That's why she parsed it down to this incredibly small thing. She's saying, look, Eric, the fact is I will experience pain because there will be occasions when um, somebody successfully flirts with you subtly enough that you don't check them in any way. And I might witness that at some point. And I'm going to feel jealous. And I really hate that feeling. So I'm very upset right now about this because this would seem to in some fashion bode ill for the well-being of us long term well I mean that's your problem that's that's the problem you have with your relationship you know, you see what I'm saying? It's like, that's not a problem. That's not a real thing that we're talking about. That's not happened at all. And that... You see, I watched Borat. Oh, Bike Ride in Sexy Time. Is that from Borat? That must be... Uh, um, I mean, maybe not, but, uh, 
Yeah, the thing is. There, there are no circumstantial reasons for, for there to be any problems here. She, there's nothing legitimate to complain about. Nobody's asking her to do anything at all. Asking anything ever, other than to be happy and do whatever she wants. And, uh, and yet, you have to retain some ability to cross, cross future bridges in the future. If you are crippled right now at age six because you know someday you're going to die, then there's no point in even getting up in the morning. Okay, well, let's say that does happen. Let's say, in fact, I become president and you say, hey, you know what? This isn't for me. So, then, leave me then. But, right now, we have not a single reason to feel anything other than remarkably lucky in our love life and our life in general. So, you know, if you if you if you insist that this is such a big problem, you know in advance this is such a big problem. Then leave me then. But I don't understand why we're crossing this bridge now. I have to say though, I appreciate the faith in my um, in my ability to become president. It's funny that I'm having an argument with my girlfriend, she's mad because when I become president, <laughs> women are gonna flirt with me, right? I mean, come on, Rachel. But women want to be with men who are wanted. Rachel, I don't impose myself on you. I'm not asking you to just do anything with me. Or or whatever. I, I like to do things with you. I you know. If I weren't if I weren't a public figure, you wouldn't have been interested in me. Yeah, this is this is the ultimate first world relationship problems. They also my first world relationship problems. Rachel got exactly what she wanted beyond any possible reality, right? Like, um, she, she, as I told her earlier, you know, she's the most powerful wizard ever. She got exactly what she wanted, perfectly, and then as she has it, she says, but there's a quality implicit in what I want that it makes me scared a little bit. Scared of what? I'm not sure, but scared, I guess, of the negative feelings that would go along with with the flirting thing. Uh, but it hasn't happened again, and I mean, it's, it's a. I don't give off a. I don't give off a vibe that invites that shit. I just don't. Not how what works. Your girlfriend is mad that you refused to run for president? I'm not being intellectually alpha. I'm I'm being incredibly reasonable and and as loving as I can about everything. I, you know, it's like I, I can't avoid the reality that that there's not a real problem here. I'm sorry, I just can't avoid that reality. It is reality. There's not a real problem here. Uh, even if Rachel's intuition is given full credit for always being right, there's still not a real problem here. It hasn't it hasn't arose yet. You know.
Um, I think I am decisive and reassuring. I am unwaveringly certain and clear in what my advocacies are about racial and the relationship and my global commitment and stuff like that. I am publicly and openly so. And I am in every way, shape, and form engaged in how one ought to deal with one's partner in general. So, um, it's just, I, I'm just saying, I'm worried because Rachel is still not asleep, you know? I'm sure it does, Rachel. You gotta remember though, also, there's one more thing that's really critically important. And this is for this is true for this is good advice for everybody in the world. You have to compare against actual alternatives and not against an ideal. So I may not be perfect for you in every single way. No, I get jealous. Sure, I do. If I have a reason to. Um, sometimes when I hear Rachel's phone text, who's texting you? Is it a boy trying to get on you or whatever? But, um, but it thinks I, this is because I trust Rachel is why I don't get jealous. can't make Rachel go to sleep, okay? It's just, I mean, I, I am not able to, to make Rachel go to sleep whether I'm live streaming or not. Um, I tried to facilitate it and help as much as I could the night before bed. Um, and she was good sports uh, in trying what I suggested somewhat, at least. Uh, but, um, Yeah, horse mumbler is absolutely right. It's what women normally want. They want their man to be highly sought by other women, but untouchable by anybody. It's like you got exactly what you you, you won the the universalist metric thing, right? Well, we're getting into some secret info right now. The secret info is that we can lose the sight of the force for the trees sometimes. You know, it's like in this conversation, many, many people are losing sight of the forest for the trees. It, just like, you know, the five or six people over here, whatever. Because um, the the forest is, oh, right, Rachel and I have a super happy relationship. When we, are, we treat each other very lovingly, and we don't treat each other poorly. We have a healthy relationship in that regard. It, well over 90% of our interactions are positive. Um... So, and then when you say, well, okay, well, if I'm going to think about the relationship and possible aspects of, of trouble or whatever, what can I find? There's nothing, you know, but we have a great relationship. You're part-time happy? Okay, well, is that what you mean by PT? Pretty happy? Part-time? It's like the forest is straightforward. We have a really good relationship and we, we have, we are lucky. We're in a dream situation here. We've got it easy and we've got no stress. No stems, no seeds, no stress, you know? It's easy squeezy. 
we got plenty of opportunities to hang out, do things we want to do together. Um, the last couple of days, last few days, I've been, I've been more attending to work and shit, but that, that didn't prompt this sort of response from Rachel before. So I don't, I think that the, it, whatever sort of incidental correlate I point to is just that, an incidental correlate that it's, the answer is there's dysfunction emerging. Well, I'm not doing the flirting or cheating. Rachel's not even concerned about that. Her NI is too good for her to even be concerned about that because she knows I'm not going to do that. So she's concerned about other people flirting with me and me being oblivious to that. I can't punish them by castrating them because they're going to be women in the first place. Presumably, I mean, I don't think she's bothered by the prospect of gay men flirting with me. Are you, Rachel? Does that make you feel jealous? Have we dabbed today? I've, I haven't done any dabbing today, actually. <sighs> but, um... You know, I love Rachel a great deal, and, uh... At some point here, in the next hour or so, I'll wrap this up, go inside, go to bed. Um, and hope that I mean, I think we could use some FI time. Why dysfunction? Well, look. When there's sort of solution resistant problems for the last couple of days here like this uh, then we've got two choices either we're talking about a real problem that we need to address in some fashion maybe maybe I need to address a problem maybe it's my fault or whatever or maybe uh, who knows right you just want to be heard do you not feel heard by me I don't know if I can back that. I don't know if I can throw my weight behind that proposal there, MT. It, maybe. I mean... I'm not sure. G, 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 baby, baby. There she goes again. Is that a song? Um, so, you know, I... Right, well, sure. I will rewatch this. I'm saying. I am trying to get through to the problem. I don't care who who needs to change or what needs to change. I want to get to the actual thing. I'm not trying to make an interested calculus or blame. Yeah, you guys don't understand Rachel very well. I, I understand Rachel well. What's a concern? You mean you're concerned about the future? We have lots of reasons to be concerned about the future. Um, you know, it's it's totally fair and reasonable for you to expect when you express concerns about the future. For me to reassure you about those things uh, if they're appropriate concerns and I have done so multiple times about this particular thing 
The problem is you're not expressing concern about something that has anything to do with me and my behavior or actions, words, thoughts, feelings, or anything. But I'm getting the, the brunt of it regardless. I always want to work. I already said I plan to go in there and have some at my time at which point if it works but remember I have feelings too so you know You need some space. What does that mean? You have space. Like, you're in there, I'm in here. But you're choosing to be here in the live stream instead of taking advantage of your space. You're, you're saying, see, Eric, I need space. You're in my space. Well, I'm not in your space. I'm in my space. Out here, and you're in your space in there. Or we could switch, and then this would be your space, and I'd be in there, and I'd be fine. But if you come, if you, if you need time to be alone tonight, oh, you'd like to sleep alone tonight. Okay. Sure, that's fine. I'll sleep out here. That's not a problem. Physical? Physically? Yeah, yeah, sure. That's fine. You know that I, uh... I'm not ever trying to impose anything on you. That's not my style. Yeah, this is a phenomenon I I experienced uh, with Kimberly a lot, where I'd explain the reality of the situation, whatever it was. This is what actually is, and be abundantly fair to Kimberly in that calculation, in the depiction of things. You know, always err on the side of being more than fair to her. And, of course, people operate under the assumption that, oh, well, it's a relationship thing, it's a he said, she said thing, blah, 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 blah. No, it's not. I was right, completely, as I always am about these sort of things. You know? Not he said, she said. If I say that this is not an example of a real problem, it's an example of dysfunction, because it's one of the two things, then, trust me, it is. If it were a real problem, I'd be upset. If I were worried about you know, losing Rachel or something, I'd be very upset. You know, I'm comparing the chatters to... to the chatters with Kimberly. I'm saying people, chatters, and it's certainly a prerogative to do so, I'm not trying to tell you to stop, but they come in and they assume he said, she said. If I, whenever I'm talking about, you know, a problem on the internet, about, about anything, what I'm saying is correct. It's like, I, I haven't tried to trash Rachel at all in this conversation. I've tried to parse it out a bit. And I've explained, well, this is this, is this, and this is this, and this, and this, this. That's it. You know, it's like, I haven't done anything. 
Rachel knows I haven't done anything. She agrees I haven't done anything. She also knows I'm not going to do anything. That's why she's not jealous about me doing anything. She's concerned about somebody else doing meaningless stuff that won't have any impact. And she's concerned about problems that she doesn't know about yet. Or that might exist. Well, I mean, come on. If those are our problems, then, yeah, I'm not going to respond very well to that. And keep in mind, I'm responding beautifully to it. But my point is, am I going to feel really like, let me go in and show, show a left E on her? No, I'm going to feel like, this is kind of a pain in the ass. But whatever. It goes to the territory. I know what I was getting into. I know I got, uh, I'm going to have an occasional flare up of shit. I, 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 if you want to say, well, Eric, you're delegitimizing or pathologizing her because you're saying she doesn't need to be heard right now because um, she's being crazy or something. I'm not saying that at all. I spent all evening and yesterday trying to hear her. And what I've heard is what I'm telling you. That the big drama here because of something that hasn't happened and what she doesn't know. So that's, how am I going to respond to that? Am I going to be like, oh, I'm really enthusiastic about Rachel at this moment. I want to go dump a bunch of epi on her. No, when I dump epi on her, it's because I genuinely feel that way. It's like, that's my genuine enthusiasm for her. I still have that same holistic, genuine enthusiasm for her. I'm not unwavered entirely, completely unwavering. But that doesn't mean that at the moment, I'm particularly enjoying this, this stretch of challenge. You know? I don't know if I have it under control. That, I don't know. I know where... I know what's happening. And I know where it's gone before. Um, I know what's different this time. This time she is still taking her meds. But they're not working. Like, she's not sleeping. She's up right now, probably, so she was just a few minutes ago, and uh, I am too, but it's not nearly as important that I sleep. Like, I get less functional, but I don't get dysfunctional. So, you know, it's like, that's reality. I, I'd be happy to accommodate. If she wanted me to go lie down with her for an hour before I came back out here, I'd be happy to do that. I've told that to her plenty of times. She, oh, her message is always, she doesn't want to impose on me or burden me. And she wouldn't, she doesn't want to be dustily imposed and burdened herself when she wants to stay up. And so I never do, you know. But um, the, the, the long and short of that is when it does roll into dysfunction, I'm going to have to be able to determine that based on objective facts. I can't just go based on whether I feel this or that or whatever, some arbitrary bullshit. And the goal of it is going to be, it's not going to stop me from having legitimate... This is not dysfunction. Okay, what is it? It's me being annoyed with you. Okay, so it's a real problem. Come on in. Close the door, please, so we don't talk loudly out there. Um, so there's a real problem. I need to address that. No, oh, I mean, I'm just telling you how I feel, but that doesn't mean that it's dysfunction. I feel like that's a really, like, hard word. Well, I'm saying either there's a problem right now that I need to address or we need to address, a real problem, or there's not. If there's not so a problem... So, no problems that you could fix equals dysfunction? Like, why can't I just express that a thing that I worry about is you with other women? And that the rise, say if you are... A public figure, like it's gonna. Not only can you say you worry about that, you should say you worry about that, and you should you should listen, and you should expect a proper response from your spouse, which is say reassurance, guarantees, promises, all the efforts to make, and oh wait, that's exactly what you got. Yeah, but still, people make mistakes. Like I just, I'm. So what? Are you saying like Okay, no, no. So I'm saying that if it does become something where it's just happening so often, I feel so awful about myself, then I don't think I can do it. It's just 
truth, and I worry what about What in that. the world is this context where I'm allowing a bunch of women to to mob me in a way that makes for, you feel bad? For effie stuff, you know, you have to kind of Rachel, give a little... Rachel, you're, you're really grasping the straws here. Remember, I haven't done anything. And all the evidence you have is that I'm fine. You know what? I don't trust you. And that's what it probably does come down to, I guess. Okay, well, then you just don't trust at all. Because there's nobody in the world more deserving of trust than you. So that's why it's dysfunction. I'm not a control freak. Yeah, it's not fair to be annoyed at Eric for mistakes he hasn't made and has and, and in the face of him doing it all exactly right instead. She knows I'm not gonna cheat on her. She knows I'm not gonna allow any of that shit to happen. Fine. I mean, I don't expect her to be perfect. It's, I'm not. I'm not trying to bust your chops or anything. I'm trying to get her to stop busting my chops. I'm not even trying to do that. I'm trying to reassure her. I'm trying to. To do the emotional solving that I ought to do and I did in full full regalia and it had no impact yeah it's obvious to anybody it's like all you gotta do is watch my live stream and I inevitably talk about what a wonderful human being she is, how much I love her, and how precious she is to me all the time. And you might say, well, yeah, you're just blowing smoke. Except, there's lots of concrete evidence you could, you could point to that which suggests I'm not just blowing smoke. And Rachel knows this too. So, you know, I, it's, that's why it's dysfunction and not a real problem. And it's got to be one of the two. If it's not a real problem, and she's being very, like, a, like I, this is a real problem, then that comprises dysfunction. It, it, you know? I am. I am concerned. I'm not... I am sympathetic and concerned because it's not her fault, is what I'm saying. If it were a real problem, it would already be resolved. It's an, it's an imaginary problem, so that makes me concerned. And I don't know how it's going to play out exactly. I mean, I know that if Rachel continues not sleeping, that it, she's not going to, she's not going to get more reasonable. Right, but the thing is, I'm not overly concerned either, because I know that her situation is, she's receiving ongoing treatment, which is to say, that's what the medication is, right? She gets ongoing treatment. The fact that treatment sometimes needs to get adjusted when medications stop working as well or something, that's to be expected. So it's not a big deal. We're going to have to do some, some health care leg work, but, uh, Okay, no problem. You know, it's like, uh, this live stream is not me complaining about Rachel. This is not me saying, 
let's blame Rachel. Uh, this is uh, like, okay, well, Rachel's um, unhappiness, for lack of a better word, for the last couple of days uh, has made it such that I, it has to be my focus now. It's like, I can't, yeah, it's for her to sleep. She takes a shit ton of, of hardcore sleeping pills. She is wide fucking awake. Tonight, and because they haven't been working very well, I asked her to do additionally take two Benadryls and two Tylenol PMs and wash it down with, I asked her to take a, a shot of 100 proof vodka, but she only drank half of it, but, um, so that's, she took a bunch of trazodones and, uh, and what are those things called? Uh, clonopins and lithium and uh, two Tylenol PMs, two billion drills, and half a shot of vodka. And she is more awake than I am. And she smoked plenty of bowls, too. <laughs> I, I mentioned I, maybe we should get edibles. That help put her to sleep. <laughs> like, I mean, this girl, uh, she's, she is, if you were on the drugs that she were on, you'd probably die. If, if you were to just, if like, if I were to take all the shit that she just took, wash it down with half a shot of vodka, I'd probably be in the hospital. Or dead. You know? From an overdose. She, it, she She's wide awake. <laughs> so, I mean, it, she's wide awake, and after, after downing half the pharmacy, and chasing it with vodka, She's, she comes out here to insist that it is not dysfunction. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you, you know, she's wide awake. She's wide awake. So, I mean, that's why I'm not, I might seem like, no, they're not the drugs talking. The drugs don't talk. The drugs make her sleep. That's what they're for. She's taking sleeping pills. And she is not, she seems not remotely she doesn't even seem like groggy or anything or or like off unable to talk or think or anything at all she just seems super super awake so I mean yeah I have good reason to say well this is probably an example of dysfunction right because she's taking a whole fucking pile of of hardcore psych drugs to, that are designed to make her sleep plus Tylenol PM plus Benadryl plus vodka and still is not sleeping at all you know and because we have well established she made clear to me I'm not I'm not imposing this on her no I, you're not supposed to because it makes it even stronger makes the drug stronger but if you're taking a hand a whole fucking yeah pills to make you sleep and it's not doing anything then you need them to be stronger so that's why I guess she washed it down with a shot of vodka and she didn't even drink the whole shot it was a big challenge to get her to drink like she didn't like to drink alcohol like that and uh, that's good I like the fact that she didn't drink but um I tell you, it was weird. It was a weird SI moment. I went to the 7-Eleven and I got a hundred proof, or a little, a little blue airplane bottle of uh, Smirnoff 100. Smirnoff 100 proof. I used to live on those things. <laughs> I mean, just like, my car was littered with empty Smirnoff 100 proof airplane bottles. Um, look, the thing is, a situation like this can be a bit tricky because obviously it's not good for a person to take all those pills and uh, their her liver and her kidney and stuff have to deal with that shit and additionally um, as, as she built up tolerance and she takes well, I don't know if she's building up tolerance or what but it's not working it's like if she just takes more of the same pills that just makes it even more of a problem for as far as the burden on her body so I think we probably need to go to the doctor and get prescribed a new a new 
something different, you know? But regardless, we'll just deal with that. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about anything. She's fretful right now. She's worrying and stuff. But I've talked to her after she's come come back from one of these stretches. And the, uh, the, what I hear from her in those, those moments is that she wasn't really, she didn't really know why she was saying those things. And she agrees that now it seems silly, but at the time she, she was in it, she, it seemed, you know, so I don't mean to invalidate her, what she's saying at all, but it, it, I, in fact, I worked very hard to hear exactly what it is she wanted me to hear, but if, um, if when I pull out all the information, there's nothing there, then there's not really much I can do with it. Ativan, my mom, takes out of van. Uh, Rachel doesn't take out of van, I don't think. How did I quit drinking? Uh, it was not the first attempt to quit, uh, but it was just, I, I had finally just had enough. I, I had a bad New Year's, I mean, uh, Christmas Eve. And when I got off Christmas Day, Candace had taken Delilah somewhere, and they didn't want to. They didn't want to see me. Basically, um, I went out and got drunk on Christmas Day too. Uh, went to Margarita's, a Mexican restaurant, I had some margaritas, and when I woke up the day after Christmas. I was just so broken. I just was so deeply swaddled in shame and self-loathing that I, I, I no longer approached the question with a disinterested calculus. I approached it with an interested calculus instead. I said, I don't care how stupid it is. I don't care how wrong it is. I don't care how argumentationally indefensible it is. I'm going to go to Alcoholics Anonymous and I'm going to follow their instructions as a way of humbling myself adequately. I'm not going to even bother thinking about why it's wrong or try not to. I'm certainly not going to raise any objections about anything. I'm going to act like the person I am which is, you know, a totally broken, worthless drunk who has a, had a really high bottom, okay? Because my bad New Year's Eve... Well, what got, i tell you what got me to quit drinking. This is what my bad um, Christmas Eve... My bad Christmas Eve was, even though I was married, I got so drunk, so blackout drunk, that I started flirting with somebody. And that... You know, was sufficient to get me to quit drinking. Because you know, it's one thing if you're, if you're, if your drinking makes you be wicked to yourself, which certainly my drinking did. It, it made me hate myself a lot of ways. But it's another thing when your drinking makes you be wicked to somebody else. And I was in, I was married, you know not the sort of thing I'd ever do. So, uh, when, when it was real that that's what had happened, I didn't remember exactly. I didn't, I didn't remember anything really, but, um, I quit drinking. Now that's, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. If I can't, if when blackout drunk, I can't trust myself, then I can't drink. If I can't trust myself to be, to not be wicked. So, and granted, not, I mean, nothing came of it at all. I was just, I was crudely sort of commenting about some girl's boobs or something. Uh, I don't know. You know, drinking is, alcohol is a hell of a drug. Not a good drug at all.
Yeah, well, that, as long as they really want it, it's challenging. For ENTPs especially, much more so than for ENFPs. I was thinking that today, if one of the costs of FI Polar is having so much of a challenge deciding what thing I want to commit to, knowing that it's going to mean um, forsaking some other projects, you know? And how... A, Deciding how I'm going to allow having a clear plan can strain my ability to to play freely. That's a uh, that's a hard one for me. You know, it's like I know that my my action is can is is sort of dependent on on something be, me having some enthusiasm for something and wanting to do it and having it seem fun. Whereas if if I'm if I'm really following through on a plan, well then there's not gonna be a lot of sort of freestyle ideation implicit in it. It's gonna be quite the different thing. It's gonna be uh here's how I've decided to constrain myself to maximize larger goals or something. Yeah, I've I've noted that I've used on that many times of all the drugs I've done alcohol seems to me the most dangerous it's the only drug that really messes with your with your judgment I, I mean at least in terms of like making really regrettable decisions or something and sure for some people it's perfectly fine there's nothing wrong with alcohol for people who don't have a problem with alcohol. Uh, my dad is, is somebody who who did have a problem with alcohol, uh, quit for a number of years completely, and then started drinking again, but no longer does have a problem with it, which is really strange. So, aren't most drugs easy to make? No, I don't think so. Unless you're a chemist, maybe. Yeah, alcohol is easier to make than most drugs, for sure. I mean, all you have to do is leave it alone for a while. The right, you know, mix of goo, leave it alone for a while, and then it'll turn into alcohol. For example, uh, my dad says that when he was a kid and he was on the farm and he had their cows, he let them out of the barn in the spring. By springtime, the, the food they were feeding them some of it would have fermented and the cows would get drunk. Right. Well, uh, drugs are easy to, to make. The only drug that's easy to make for an average person would be alcohol. Uh, obviously, it's fairly easy to, to grow marijuana too, but that's growing up making, which is a little different. Mm. Pretty tired. Where does weed originate from? I don't know. But the question makes me want to pull a bowl. I think I probably should. Well, to a certain extent, you're right, Bond Chase, about that. Uh, alcohol gives certainty about what you want to spend your time on. Um, one of the reasons I drank was... One of the reasons I told people I drank was that... Uh, was that it allowed me to watch TV successfully. Yeah, they are visibly low. They're, they're shockingly low. I'm putting myself and everyone else at risk constantly, all the time, when I'm not smoking weed. Hmm. <sighs> 
hear animals in the wild get drunk on fruit laying on the ground. That's, I, you know, there's documented cases of drunk birds in the wild. I got the, I got control of the raw rooms back, by the way, if anybody's curious. I've been back and forth with the people at um, whereby.com. And now I am admin. And uh, here, I ICP dad just watched how things are built while running. I don't, you know, I think that pro probably there aren't any alcoholic birds because I don't think there's a reliable enough source of alcohol. THC is technically an alcohol? Really? A tetrahydric one, not a monohydric? So that means it's not a liquid or what? Or is the is the the THC crystals technically a liquid? Or are they viscous in some fashion? How do you console a grieving INTP? That's not an easy proposition because they're gonna, they're gonna take their time a bit. They've got SI third. They don't like it's selfish, you know. I anchor Jason Blood. I've been live streaming on the other channel uh, because this one's being shadow banned, which is to say I get like almost no recommended videos. Probably the best thing you could do is ask him to solve some sort of intellectual problem for you. Hmm. In your shoes, I would have shut it down and not looked back. Shut down what? I don't know what you're talking about. You may not be talking to me, I'm not sure. That sucks, man. I mean, you don't console people for stuff like I mean, you can console them, but it's not. you're not actually consoling them. You're going through the motions of consolation. Hi, Winston's Bob. <laughs> no, no, this is a good time. This is a good time. I'm pulling balls. I'm a little sleepy. Um, you know, sleep sleep's been an issue for both me and Rachel for four or five days now, probably. words on consoling the INTP. Anal wreckage. Like, one time Hambone's pet died, and I went down there to wherever he lives, and I shoved a Arrowhead bottle up his butt. One of the big kind, you know, the, the kind that they carry in it. It's up up really like that. He was so much happier after that. Big yawns for little Eric. Those are some big, big yawns. Big yawns for little Eric. I, I Hambone. Go with Hambone's suggestion. Give your condolences. Plus mine. Airhead bottle up the butt. And then leave it at that. forever.
over or dying schedule. Um. <coughs> Live forever, probably. Like my dad, SI tool, NI uh, polar. He, he seems sort of genuinely, genuinely confused about the fact that as he starts looking ahead a little further, the TE runs afoul of this I'm gonna die thing. Like. Instead, get him a console. Maybe a PS4? Zandy! Hi! Zandy's here. Look, everybody, it's Zandy. She's, she's here all the way from Fresno. Zandy, have I mentioned to you before that you're the fresno person I know? It's true. You are the most fresno person I know. Wait till he's napping and then nut on his face and say, there, <laughs> that should make you feel better. Yeah, right. Why are you so morose? Just be happy you didn't kill him. That's what you tell the INTP. Hey, hey, hey! No time for long faces. That always works. It's been a very interesting live stream. Thank you. Email Anthrax. I appreciate your kind regard. I agree, it has been an interesting live stream. Uh. I haven't walked a hundred meters away from my apartment. A very famous comedian died of COVID-19 here in Tokyo. Numbers rose from 100 cases up. COVID-19 to 600? Wow. Oh, wait. You live in Sacramento? Same difference. Zandy. I think they're thinking about... They're talking about combining them into... Good night, email answer. Combining them into Fresno Mentro. Or Sacra Fresno. Your planets are lined up. They're lining up like something. SFJs. Yeah, well, it's true. They need to... Italy's death rate is 10%. Wow. That's a lot of death for a little cold. Uh, so, here's the thing. Remember, the problem isn't really whether or not it would be great to do this for this virus. The problem is what do we do next year when a real, actual dangerous virus arrives and we no longer can afford to shut down the world for two months? Because we blew it on this. We blew our, our wad on this bullshit. Am I an April Fool's jokester? No, I'm not an April Fool's joker jokester. Yo, yeah, well, that's a eh. it, uh, everybody needs to be able to say sorry if they fucked up, you know? That's accountability embracement sent success. If you're just avoiding accountability, then you're avoiding accountability. CMV. ENFPs are more academically inclined than ENTPs. 
That's true. The tertiary can literally do anything except conditional logic. Uh, T-I-F-E in the ENTP just wants to be technically right, but isn't actually practical. Well, I mean, what you say technically right, I call universally legitimate. Um, what you call practical, I call particularist and interested. So, I'm a, I am a, a meta-analyst. I'm metaphysical, metaphysical. I'm universalist, universalist. Um, for an FI user, that's going to seem impractical or not serving one's own interests, not not taking advantage of opportunities or stuff like that, you know? No, I mean, the thing is, it's, it's one of those things where, like, what we decided to do is use our entire supply of fire extinguishers for the fire drill. So when there's actually a fire, we don't want to have any fire extinguishers left. Okay, whatever Trump did with the Center for Disease Control has absolutely nothing to do with the current butt fuckery. That's the only word for it. It's abundant Highly contagious butt fuckery. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I call. I had to call my doctor up to get a prescription for Adderall, and the reported message says, even though eighty percent of people who catch this have very minor or even no symptoms. It's best to stay at home to protect those who are at risk. Except any sane human being would point out that those who are at higher risk for dying when there's a pandemic going around should be the ones who isolate, not the 80% who aren't. Duh. Just because some people are allergic to peanuts doesn't mean that we don't have any peanuts. Because after all, if you have peanuts in the world, some people who are allergic to peanuts are going to die from eating them. Very similar to COVID. True, if you're 92 years old and have multiple pre-existing conditions and get COVID, then that's the random whatever thing that's going to kill you instead of the cold. Okay? Of course, remember, in order to protect these, these few elderly people from having to isolate themselves and protect themselves, right? So, in other words, in order to, to, to prevent the people who are at high risk from having to take any kind of action to protect themselves, we've decided to force millions of perfectly innocent, good people, families all over the world into homelessness. We've decided to dramatically lower everyone's standard of living. We will cause vastly more deaths indirectly than any deaths we directly prevent. And it's unlikely we're going to prevent deaths. It's an unvaccinatable disease because it's coronavirus, same as a common cold. That's why it's unvaccinatable. I'm not saying that it's the same strength as the common cold, as a disease, but I'm saying that explains why it's not vaccinatable. So these are reality. This is reality check time, right? Here we go. That's right. This is fucking totally insane. This is not how things should be done. Not remotely. If, in fact, there is a small minority of the population that because of pre-existing conditions or other high-risk factors make them particularly susceptible to, to substantial negative harms like being very sick or dying, then those parties should definitely take extreme caution and make big efforts to isolate themselves. 
That's putting the burden where it belongs, obviously. No, no, no sane human being should dispute this. I'd fucking tear the floor. I, I would use him to clean the bottom of the dumpster. And anybody else who wants to pull bullshit. If they're arguing bullshit, they'll lose to me. If they're right, they, they won't lose because I'm not going to argue. I, and I'm not, I don't need to debate for the sake of debating anymore. I could win plenty of arguments where I'm wrong, but I never try to argue those arguments. Some people are dying, some don't even display symptoms. Right. Not really. I mean, that's the history of all viruses in human civilization. They pick out the weak, the young, the old, the sick, the disabled. I would, I would posit that the high death rate in Italy probably has more to do with Italian incompetence than it does to, with their age, but that's just a hypothesis. I mean, South Korea's got substantially less than 1%. So, the Italian 10% likely has to do with... Um, Unique demographic things like a large population of people who are at high risk and, and also who uh, have pre existing conditions and who smoke. Um, additionally, you've got a situation where I, I place little faith in Italian numbers in general. Who knows how good their testing protocols are or if they're testing the right percentage of people? You know, if, if, you're, just if you're just testing, the people who are showing symptoms, then obviously you're going to have a, a wildly off-base number of deaths per, per infection. Slavic girls are sexy. Does it mean from Yugoslavia? Are they, are they, is that Slavic? They have a, a bad medical system and some more old people. Well, I mean, the point is, though, I, what's a question is not whether or not a lot of people have died in Italy. The question is, why are their fatality rates for infection so much higher? Regardless of what the reason is, it's likely a reason unique to Italy and not indicative. It's, it's, it's more likely it, the false, the thing that we learned was false than it is anything else. You know, it's like, it's the... It's the least trustable of the data. Ukraine, Poland, etc. It's going to be hell. It's already bad. Is it? I mean... The only... The only thing that I, the only absolutely certain impacts of what this whole shutdown thing is are, are almost entirely economic. Uh, there's not a clear reason to believe this virus is going to die out with, when the weather warms up. If it were a flu, there'd be more reason for it. But we can't stay, we can't stay cowering under rocks forever and when we come out, the virus will still be running its course until the population as a whole all gets it, and then we start to develop some antibodies to the shit, you know? But, um... That's... that's it's like... 
I guess this is the first time the first time humans have been presented so clearly with an abstract threat because COVID is an abstract threat foremost for most people like me, Rachel, everybody around here, my friend Corey who insists on staying 10 feet away from me because he does have previous listening conditions and put him at higher risk um, it's an abstract threat you might say, well, it wouldn't be abstract if you were to walk around the world and get it. It would still be an abstract threat unless you were one of the people who wasn't in the 80% who experienced little to no symptoms. Then it would still be an abstract threat. You say, well, it's not a threat to those people who get the disease and die from it. Well, true, but that's why it shouldn't be, it should be more than abstract action on their part. Okay, so here's a commonly said argument. Developing treatment requires a certain time frame. This is actually a little bit of a new one. Normally what people say is vaccines. That's not possible with this virus, but developing treatment. So what sort of treatment are you imagining is going to be developed? From what I understand, the treatment is universally understood. It's ventilators in the worst case situations. And that the problem in the status quo is that the U.S., for example, doesn't have enough ventilators. So if the system were overwhelmed by a sudden burst of of sick people then a lot of people would die because there's not enough medical uh, stuff to provide them the treatment that they need that we already know what that treatment is <laughs> so my point would be why don't we put at the tiniest sliver of a fraction of the resources we're wasting on this bullshit into getting more ventilators <laughs> I ain't the doctor uh huh. Yeah, I I plan to. Um, you know, I'm I'm easy peasy. If Rachel tells me she would like me to sleep with her or something or be in there with her, I'd be happy. If she tells me she wants me out of there, I'd be happy to be out here. It's fine. Um, I understand that. I already talked to her about, like, the need. I, I need to avoid incidents. I, I don't think we're going to have any incidents like that because I'm on top of it. I'm kind of hungry now, too. I didn't really eat much dinner. Rachel didn't eat anything either for dinner. Rachel ate, like, nothing. That, that's another correlate. Interesting. Oh, it's such a good deal on fried chicken today at Ralph's. Um, and it was eight pieces of fried chicken for three ninety nine. Normally seven ninety nine. I mean, it does happen. I'm not saying that that. Um, people aren't going to die of this virus. 
and it seems likely, highly likely, maybe even almost certain, that we have delayed some deaths, we are continuing to delay some deaths by doing this, while indirectly causing many others, of course. But I'm not convinced that we're preventing any deaths, ultimately. The thing is, if you look at all the facts about COVID, you conclude the only thing that could possibly be concluded, okay? If you look at all the facts about COVID, you conclude the only thing that could possibly be concluded, which is, oh man, this is really unfortunate, this is fucked up, but it appears based on all the facts we have here, there's really nothing we can do about it. Because it's super infectious, super easily spread, has a fairly long incubation period, it's... Um, easily carried without people noticing it because a large percentage of people have no symptoms at all. And um, we have absolutely no immunity as a species to it. It's going to just tear through the whole population. And the only thing we could possibly even conceive of doing would be worse than the than the problem itself. Shut down a whole society. We obviously can't do that, so we're just going to have to let it run the course and do the best we can to adapt to rather than trying to mitigate. Adapting means doing things like look hire a bunch of seasonal personnel for extra hospital people, you know, bring in teams, you know, adjust like you do if, it, instead of trying to prevent this, if we knew a hurricane were coming to hit someplace, we wouldn't try to prevent it, but we would try to prevent damage from it. It's adapting, right? We don't try to get a big giant fan and blow the, the hurricane away. Because what's going to happen, we can't hold out forever, right? What's going to happen when we, when we have to stop, when we have to actually start working again, you know, when people have to start doing their shit again? The fact that China is back up and running is not evidence in favor of the shit that we're doing. He died from COVID, you know, and, and six bullets in the head, but it counts as COVID. Exactly. MT is right. The harms, in, the harms caused by this solution, quote unquote, already vastly outstripped the benefit. It is not the case that lives are worth infinitely amount of money.
think it's good. Well, it's true. Proposing the harms of virus defense theater is not designing the risks of the virus. The virus is indeed bad. It will indeed kill people. And so that's not a good reason for us to blow up the whole neighborhood. But see, all these, when you add up all of these reasons that people talk about and use for various purposes in their argumentation, it all, it all manifests into a big turn. What I'm convinced of by all of this talk about the virus and its unique qualities of it is that, oh, so you're right. There's nothing we can do about it. This Coca Cola is not bad for you. Now, note Winston's mom if he had been tested positive for the COVID virus we would hear that he had died of <coughs> COVID. Heart attack notwithstanding. When hearts attack. Coke eats your teeth. Well, it also quenches your thirst. Very many are thirsty. Yeah, I mean, for people, that's the thing. For people with function, well-functioning, successful immune responses to the thing, it's not a big deal at all. It's actually, the problem with COVID is that it creates an over, an over immune response. So your lungs get inflamed from, from uh, basically an allergic reaction of sorts. It's like your antibodies, your white blood cells are flooding in there. <sighs> okay.
So, who wins? Flu or, or COVID? I'm going to end this. Uh, I guess I'm going to end this live stream. It seems like um, I may talk to Rachel right now. Um, so, Rachel, let me ask you. Would you like me to end this talk to you? Which is fine. Or would you like... Forget, end it. forget the question. End this. Do you want me to... Do you want to talk to me right now? Um, or are you just... Like, do you want me to... Like... How, how quickly do you want to get away from here? Okay. Let's do it then. Uh, uh, where's my blurt? She doesn't want me to chase her. I don't want to chase her either. Okay. Uh, I mean, the thing is, I have trouble believing you're going to sleep any better anywhere else. There's, there's nothing constraining your ability to sleep here at all. I'm not sleeping with you. I have no problem with that. You know, whatever, you've got a very comfortable bed. You can sleep, you can sleep out on the floor. You can sleep on the couch. You can sleep out here. If offered it, you could displace me from here. I'm not bothering you at all. Nobody put any burden on you of anything. So there's not, I don't have, I, I don't see a reason or oh, like, is there any reason to think you're actually going to sleep better there? So it's is that's the only reason why you want to go over there, or what? Do you want to talk about this now? I don't know. I don't know what you want. No people. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, Thanks for being here. She has plenty of pills, Winston's mom. Abundance of pills is not a problem. She's been taking them, too. She's not, not taking her meds. Oh, yeah, we're going to work it out fine. It's just, we need to, whatever, I'll do with it. I'll do with it. Thanks for being here.